the Jew in the exile, and it did not matter where the exile was, whether Poland or Morocco or Russia or Yemen, it was the same dream. It was a dream that was called Shivat Zion, the return to Zion. And the Jew sat in his exile of fear and terror, humiliation, and dreamed of a day when someday he would leave the terror, the fear, the humiliation, and come home to his own state, where he would live without fear and without terror and humiliation. So today, thanks to God's mercies and Jewish sacrifice, there is a state you come home. There is no terror. There is no fear. Let me tell you the week that I had in Israel just three weeks ago. It was a Wednesday, 10 minutes of 11 in the morning. Jerusalem, the capital city. On Jaffa Road, the main streets, of Jerusalem. Opposite the main post office, with hundreds of people milling about. Around the corner from the main police station, an Arab walked over to where five Jews were sitting at the bus 19 bus stop. Murdered two of them, wounded three. There's no fear and no terror. Jewish state. The crowd chased the Arab and caught him. The police waded in with clubs and with tear gas and made sure that he was not dealt with. Today he sits in, in prison eating at our expense and drinking at our expense. Waiting for a trial. There will be a trial. In which he will receive a life sentence. Perhaps if the judges are more severe, he receives two life sentences. He will receive visits every single week from the International Red Cross to make sure that he hasn't been insulted, let alone beaten. He will sit for four or five years and wait until the PLO kidnaps three or four soldiers. And then we'll leave in exchange, in a prisoner exchange, as happened five years ago, when we freed 1,150 terrorists for six soldiers. The following Sunday, they found the body of a 14-year-old boy, a boy who was living in Batyam. His body was found in Jaffa, Jaffa. Fourteen-year-old boy had been raped and mutilated. They arrested two Arabs. When the police announced that some 80% of the sex crimes in, in Israel are committed by Arabs, immediately a cry came out, racism. So obviously since it's racism, we should not say that 80% are committed by Arabs. I was at the home. I paid a shiver call the following day. In fact, yeah, I sat next to the uncle who said to me, from now on, I don't let my children out of the house. Which I thought was a remarkably proud reaction. It fits the words of Hatikva, the national anthem of Israel, Liot Am Choshiba to be a free people. In our, in our land. These are free to let his, his children. That Tuesday, they, they found the body of a soldier who had been missing for close to two months. He had been hitchhiking near Ashkelon. But all of these incidents took place within the Green Line, within the Jewish state, not the occupied territories. He had been Hitchhiking and missing. They found his body in a shallow grave. He had been shot in the head, and his body had been cut into pieces. 
It was at the funeral in Ashdod where the soldier had lived. And his father grabbed me and held me and he said, Huaya Perach, he was a flower. He was a flower. That flower will, will never bloom again. It's one thing to have a son, a soldier, who dies in battle. There's some comfort to it. A soldier hitchhiking in the state. A second soldier is, is now missing. He's been missing now for a month. He'll be found soon. And so the cabinet mulled over a proposal to not to allow soldiers to hitchhike, which I think is a very proud reaction. That's the way to do it. That's the Jewish state. Yotam Choshi, I would say, to be proud people in our own, own land. That Jewish soldiers should not be allowed to hitchhike because of the danger. Jews are afraid today to go to the Western Wall through Shar Shem, through Damascus Gate. They are afraid to go through the Arab ship. When I founded the Jewish Defense League, it was because Jews were afraid in Brooklyn. And I could understand that. But I never dreamed that I would go to Israel and find Brooklyn. And that is the disgrace. Today we find an article, Israeli flag banned in Old City on Jerusalem Day. Tomorrow is Jerusalem Day. The police will prohibit the waving of Israeli flags in the Old City next week during marches and rallies marking Jerusalem Day. <coughs> the ban apparently is intended to avoid disturbances by the Arab population. I don't know whether to laugh or to cry. This is the dream of 2,000 years. But of course, I'm the extremist, of course. In the Torah, there is, and there is a law, an interesting law, that when one finds the body of a murdered Jew, 